ActiveCampaign has been my email marketing platform for eight years. I just paid for another year up front. I'll probably still be a customer eight years from now. In this Active Campaign review, I'll tell you what I love, what I don't love, and what in the past has made me consider switching. At any time, if you decide you want to try Active Campaign free for 14 days, please use my affiliate link. After your free trial with this link, you'll get 20% off annual plans. I'll make a commission if you become a paying customer, but I promise I will tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly from eight years with Active Campaign. For background, I'm David Cadaby. I'm author of books such as Mind Management, Not Time Management. I've been using email marketing in my business since 2010 and have over 20,000 active subscribers. I started with MailChimp, but after lots of research, I chose Active Campaign in 2016 and have been with them ever since. One of my favorite things about Active Campaign is a big reason I've been with them so long. I love Active Campaign's upgradeability. They have four different levels of service, starting as low as $15 a month for a starter plan. Then they have the plus pro and enterprise plans. Even better, they have add-ons available for anything above the starter plan, like SMS marketing, enhanced CRM for pipelines and sales engagement, and transactional emails. This has been a crucial reason why I've stayed with Active Campaign because my business and the way I've used email marketing over the years has evolved and continues to evolve, and I don't always know how it's going to evolve. Early on, I used MailChimp, which was fine because I only sent simple email blasts, but when I started building automations, I found I couldn't do what I wanted. I felt like my hands were tied. I took one look at Active Campaign's visual drag and drop automation builder, and I was in love. I'll go into this more in depth soon, but let's just say I felt unshackled. Anything is possible with Active Campaign's automations. Now I run a Shopify store where I sell my books directly to readers, and I'm just beginning to explore Active Campaign's features for e commerce stores like site tracking and dynamic content for sending special offers, upsells, and cross sells. I love to know that no matter how my business evolves, Active Campaign will have features to help me grow. Like if I develop a high ticket product or service with a longer sales cycle, they have CRM features for managing the sales pipeline. For example, lead scoring and AI-powered win probability, which will help you decide when a prospect is ready to buy so you can set up a sales call and strike while the iron is hot. If I built an app, I could add on transactional emails to handle password resets and other critical account management emails. I don't plan to build my business into a huge multinational, but they have robust features for enterprise customers too, like a dedicated account manager, uptime SLA agreements, and robust data security features such as HIPAA compliance. Enterprise and agency folks will love the white labeling. You agency owners can thrill your clients by reselling Active Campaign as an agency partner, but with your own or your client's own branding on it so it looks and feels like you built it just for them. Enterprises will love that they can brand AC to make it look like internal company software. With that upgrade ability comes versatility. The thing that has made Active Campaign versatile from the beginning has been their automations and their drag and drop visual editor. This is something a lot of competitors have tried to copy over the years, but when it comes to automations, AC is OG. Active Campaign's automations aren't Duplo, they are full on Lego. They have building blocks from behaviors such as opening and clicking within an email, e commerce action such as visiting a web page or making a purchase, and CRM events such as when a deal's status changes, or really cool, sentiment analysis, or whether a lead's latest response was negative or positive. Let me show you some of my own automations. Now, before I get into these, you should know, I like to build my automations from scratch, so the ones I show you might look like a lot of work, but Active Campaign has hundreds of automation recipes to start with, organized by industry, for example, in e-commerce, such as product interest tagging, request for review, and determine best sales drip for split testing sales sequences. The recipes are a great source of ideas for how to get the most out of your email marketing, and there's a wizard to help you set them up. Here's the very first type of automation I built, an email course, but I don't do a simple drip sequence. Here's a welcome automation for my email course, 100 Word Writing Habit, which starts every Wednesday. So this condition checks to see if it's Tuesday or not. If it's not Tuesday, it waits until Tuesday to send an email encouraging them to share the course with a friend. Then this go-to action brings them to this wait condition until the course starts Wednesday morning. If it's already Tuesday, too late for the sharing email, so they go straight to the wait condition. The timing is all synced up with the timer on my page, so my email course runs on autopilot week after week. 
the deadline and the sharing email turn it into a list growth flywheel. I'm very proud of this automation for running a webinar. On the surface, it's pretty straightforward. There are goals in it for registering for the webinar and attending it. If they missed it, there's an Encore webinar the following week. Then there's a follow-up automation for those who attended and another for those who missed it. My favorite active campaign feature is message variables, which you can use in any message, but is especially powerful for these webinar automations. For example, I have variables for the prices of various products and variables for the expiration date of the offer. So when I want to do a new webinar, I don't have to go through all these emails and change these things. I just change these variables and my entire sequence is customized for my new prices and expiration date. A few other automations quickly, lead magnets. Like any email marketer, I offer various lead magnets. This one delivers a free book with follow-ups based upon their level of engagement. Speaking of engagement, when you get new leads through paid traffic, such as Facebook ads, you wanna be sure they're engaging with your emails before you put them on your main list. So a couple days after I send the lead magnet, I send a reminder about it, but with more content. A few days after that, I check to see if they've opened or clicked on any email. Then I have various paths they go based upon their level of engagement. If they go too long without engaging, I send them into a reactivation sequence where I'll eventually stop sending emails altogether. That protects my sender reputation and keeps my deliverability rate up. Active campaigns deliverability is great, by the way, I'll get to that later. Speaking of re-engaging or getting rid of inactive subscribers, the versatile automations give you lots of options. I use this one straight from an older version of Active Campaigns recipes. It's actually two separate automations. Part one keeps adding tags over time to know how long it's been since they last engaged. Part two simply removes all those tags, then ends and restarts that automation anytime they do engage. And that can be based upon opens, clicks, or website visits. If they haven't engaged in a while, I send them to an automation that tries to get them to re-engage. If they don't, I unsubscribe them. If there's been a mistake, they can enter their email in a form and I won't bother them about it again. I like this way better than what I've seen on other platforms where they'll tell you a subscriber is inactive, but not tell you much about what they mean by inactive. They'll help you remove them, but you can't do much to re-engage or avoid accidentally removing an active subscriber. Another thing that makes Active Campaign versatile is its integration integrations. They're one of the biggest email marketing platforms. So if there's a piece of software that's important to your business, there's a good chance ActiveCampaign already integrates with it. And these are not puny integrations. Like when I was doing webinars often, AC's integration with Webinar Jam was awesome. Lots of options. The integrations with other platforms weren't nearly as robust. But if ActiveCampaign doesn't have a direct integration or if the integration doesn't have all the options you need, they integrate with Zapier. For example, BookFunnel, which I use to deliver eBooks and which is really specific to indie authors, integrates with ActiveCampaign, but I use Zapier for the advanced feature of generating a unique download link for each subscriber. I also use Zapier for meta lead capture, and this is a workaround. Active Campaign can capture meta leads, but I use Zapier for more advanced integration with BookFunnel. The final feature I'll talk about that makes Active Campaign versatile is their segmentation. You can build segments based upon an insane number of variables, including campaign activity, whatever fields you've created, website activity, and AI powered predictive geography. A big reason I switched to AC in the first place was you can mix and or operators in your segments, no problem. You couldn't do that at all on MailChimp when I switched. Now you can do it on their standard plan, but you can't mix ands and ors as much as on Active Campaign. If you create segments with any sophistication, AC's segment builder is a breath of fresh air. I'll sum up this section on versatility by saying in the eight years I've used Active Campaign, I have never imagined something I wanted to do that I was not able to do. I've tried many other email marketing platforms and I cannot say that about any of them. For example, this is an old school feature, but I wanted to use RSS so that when I published a post within a certain category, on my WordPress blog, Active Campaign would schedule and send an email to subscribers, kind of like a roll your own Substack. Lots of email marketing platforms can send out emails when an RSS feed updates, but nobody gave me as much control as Active Campaign. Now, ironically, Frankensteining RSS to send my weekly newsletter while also hosting the content on my website was a project that made me consider switching from Active Campaign, but after trying alternatives, AC turned out to be the best option after all. Let me get into some other reasons why I've considered switching 
and why I've decided to stay with Active Campaign. One reason is deliverability. As you'll see, it turned out I wasn't having problems with deliverability, but I think every email marketer likes to think they're missing out on deliverability. Deliverability is a hot button issue email marketing platforms use to try to motivate you to switch because it's a mysterious idea. I mean, imagine if a lot of your emails just aren't getting opened simply because they're not getting to your subscribers. Imagine if just by switching, you could magically get your emails to 10, 20, or 30% more subscribers, your open rates would grow accordingly, and so would your revenue. And that is a magic bullet idea. It's comforting to think that what stands between you and more successful email marketing is something that's not your fault. That the reason your emails aren't getting open isn't because your content could be better or your subject lines more enticing. To add to the mystery, it's hard to know if you're having a problem with deliverability. So email marketing platforms prey upon this insecurity around deliverability and do so behind the cloak of how it's kind of hard to know the difference between one platform and another. So you go through the work of switching only to find out that you see no change at all. All that said, I feel confident I'm getting excellent deliverability with Active Campaign because of independent tests, my own test, and because of some basic principles about deliverability. Email Tool Tester regularly tests the deliverability of 15 email marketing platforms. Their methodology is to send about 80 email addresses across 28 ISPs and see how many emails get through. Across their three latest tests, Active Campaign has come out on top with a deliverability rate of 94.2%. The average deliverability rate across all platforms was only 83.1%. But Kit was not in their latest test because Kit didn't allow DMARC authentication at the time, which is really important to deliverability. Kit has now added the DMARC authentication feature, so I wanted to find out for myself how their deliverability compared. I ran a test sending real campaigns to a random sample of my actual email list and found no significant difference in open rates between Active Campaign and Kit. Details in another video. If I were to guess between Active Campaign and Kit, who would have the higher deliverability rates in the future? I would guess AC. That has to do with some basic principles of email deliverability, and it also has to do with another reason I've in the past considered switching from AC, and that is growth. A really enticing feature of Kit for creators is their creator network. Basically, you can partner with other creators so that when someone subscribes to your list, a lead can also subscribe to other creators' lists and vice versa. I talked to one major creator, like one of the biggest in the business, and they said they loved this creator network. They wished they had switched to Kit sooner. There was another major creator, dominant in a smaller niche, who I knew used Kit but wasn't in the creator network. I reached out and asked them why. What they said made a ton of sense. Basically, do you want subscribers on your list because they merely checked a box or because they didn't uncheck a box, much less if they did so while signing up for someone else's email list. And along with one, two, three, four, five other email lists. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Anyone who has managed an email list knows you want active, engaged subscribers. You don't want to pay to send emails to people who don't want them, much less ruin your sender reputation. If subscribers aren't engaged with your list, or worse yet, they can't even remember how they got on your list, there's a much higher chance they'll report your emails as spam. That drags down your sender reputation, which drags down your deliverability. If a lot of email list owners across an entire email marketing platform are consistently sending to unengaged subscribers, that does not bode well for that platform's sender reputation across their entire infrastructure. You can see this in action with Substack, for example. Many of their creators have complained about poor deliverability. What are you gonna do? Substack sends emails for free. Substack isn't in email tool testers tests, so it's hard to know their deliverability for sure. But Substack has this same model where people can join your list by checking a box or just not unchecking a box while signing up for someone else's list. So it would make sense if they had poor deliverability. Now, what about that gigantic creator who swears by the creator network? The creator network is probably a sort of rich get richer situation. If you're a huge creator with a lot of name recognition, people might keep a box checked because, hey, I've heard of them. Why haven't I joined their list? Plus, when all the smaller creators think of who to add to their network, they'll naturally think of the one or two dominant players and the favor will not be returned. Kit's creator network isn't magic. Unless you're already famous, you will have to work to get recommended by other creators. I'm not famous, but enough to make a full-time living from my platform. 
I made a profile during the month I ran my test and got added to no networks and gained no subscribers from Kit's creator network. So I had thought about switching from Active Campaign to Kit because I had FOMO about the creator network, but after digging deeper into that feature, my FOMO turned into JOMO. I'm much happier growing my list through lead magnets, ads, and word of mouth, and using Active Campaign's robust automation features to ensure my new leads actually want my email. To sum up this section on why I've considered switching from Active Campaign in the past, I thought their RSS support was limited, it turned out it was good. I wondered about deliverability, but it turned out it was great. And I was curious about the growth features, but I concluded I wasn't missing much. Now I promise to tell you the bad stuff about Active Campaign. I've said in the past that I think choosing an email marketing platform is a bit like choosing a spouse or buying a house. There are going to be trade-offs, and there might even be some things that drive you crazy. But in the end, you have to decide what's best overall for you and your business and decide to be happy. First up is support. Active campaign support is really responsive. I found it more responsive with the on-site chat than through email. When I tried out Kit though, their support was even more responsive, it was friendlier, and they communicated more clearly. But that didn't ultimately make one better than the other. I'm a pretty advanced user. If I'm contacting support, usually either I'm trying to do something very unusual that isn't covered in the support docs, or something is broken. So having really responsive support agents doesn't do me any good if they only know the information I can already find. Next is the campaign editor. I do not like Active Campaign's email editor at all. You'll see one thing in the preview, then you send a test email and the formatting is often different for no apparent reason. Sometimes you have to delete and start over. You can do a lot of stuff with Active Campaign's editor, but I don't want most of that stuff and it makes the editor buggy. They released a new campaign editor, which I was excited about, but it didn't turn out to be any better for my needs and I still use the classic editor. One crazy thing is if you want to include an image in a block of text, you still have to break the text into two different blocks and place the image between them. By contrast, you can't do as much with Kit's email editor, but making a simple email with text and images, as I do, is really easy with them. I don't like this aspect of Active Campaign, but now that my weekly newsletter sends through RSS when I publish on WordPress, I don't have to work with their editor as much. Next is editing campaigns within an automation, such as an email course. On Active Campaign, I can either click into each email from within the automation, which is cumbersome, or I can go through the automation messages flow and open the emails through there, and it's just kind of clunky. By contrast, editing email courses in Kit is a dream. You can easily click amongst all the emails in the course. But ultimately, once I create an email course, I don't edit it that often, so a little extra clicking around up front isn't so bad for me. Despite the things about Active Campaign that are less than ideal, I'm clearly very happy with the platform, which is why I've been using them for eight years. Just because I'm happy with AC doesn't mean you will be. Try the free trial available through my link. Now, here are some alternatives to Active Campaign, depending upon your needs. If you are all in on e-commerce, take a look at Klaviyo. They have deep integration with e-commerce platforms such as Shopify and pre-built automations for e-commerce scenarios. If you're a creator, no surprise here, take a look at Kit. They have a quicker setup with simpler automations and lots of built-in tools for creators, such as lead magnet landing pages and monetization, though with fewer integrations and no CRM. If you're an enterprise customer, check out Salesforce Marketing Cloud. It's by Salesforce, so their Salesforce integration is native. It will help you craft sophisticated customer journeys with rich data, but at a premium in cost and complexity. Here's a look at pricing. Price isn't as important as having the right email marketing tool for your business, but as you can see, Active Campaign has really competitive pricing, and as I've said, lots of different levels of service to customize for your business. So that's why I've been with Active Campaign for eight years and will probably be with them eight more years. There's of course no substitute for actually trying an email marketing platform, so try out them and any others I've mentioned. Thanks for watching.